गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम टू द क्लास स्टूडेंट्स द डिस्कशन टिल नाउ हैज शोन दिस वेरी क्लियरली एंड देर इज नो एम्बिग्यूटी अबाउट द पॉइंट दैट इट वॉज टेम्पल स्क्वायरल विद बेंटले एंड वॉटन विच ऑरिजिनली प्रॉम्प्टेड स्विफ्ट टू लैश टेम्पल्स क्रिटिक्स फॉर द रूडनेस of their attacks on his knowledge and views as presented by him in his essay ancient and modern learning swift was then in the swift was then an employee of sir william temple as his secretary it must have appeared intolerable to him to hang his hands in idleness while his revered patron was being howled by howled over by the calls by pedants and cheap critics it may be pointed out that swift had no personal quarrel uh, with either bentley or watton even then to quote ricardo quintana the battle of the books was on swift's part the forcing of a personal issue his pattern had been attacked so he chose to believe by two unmannerly pedants william watton and richard bentley the insult called for revenge and swift turned upon temples two antagonists with a concentrated fury students swift writes and i quote from the plant of my birth i encounter vice with mirth through the battle of books swift aimed at mirthfully encountering the vices of pedantry stupidity and discourtesy embodied in the persons of watton and bentley in this book swift adopts the epic style and conventional devices sanctified by homer and virgil and in our last class we saw how swift describes the armies of ancients and moderns how he invokes the muse and we noted that swift unlike homer and virgil does not invoke the muse of epic poetry but rather the muse of history and we also saw that the description of the battle follows epic precedents and students swift's employment of homeric similes is another feature of the battle of the books in the episode of bentley and watton swift compares these two worthies in such a some nocturnal adventure to two mongrel curls mongrel curse in search of some easy prey afterwards he compares watton to the noisy long-eared animal while he is being pursued by a boyle who is compared to a young lion when bentley and watton are transfixed together by the lance of boyle swift compares them to a pair of woodcock pierced simultaneously by a skillful cock with a spear all of these epic comparisons start with the well known traditional expression as or as when these mock epic similes add much to the narration students there are supernatural in this book the supernatural machinery was considered by the ancients to be necessary feature of an epic in homer and virgil gods and goddesses freely take interest in the mundane going on of men and take sides with the opposing factions the supernatural in the battle of books is 
one of the numerous epic features that Swift imparted to it. A supernatural machinery was considered by the ancients as an essential ingredient for an epic. Homer and Virgil sanctified the inclusion of the supernatural as a tradition through their own practice. In the Iliad and Odyssey and in the Aeneid, the supernatural occupies an important position. And it is chiefly through the active interest of the gods and goddesses that the most momentous issues are settled one way or the other. And in the battle of in the battle of book students pallas and momus support the cause of the ancient and the moderns respectively momus is joined by the malignant goddess criticism who is mother of water as in the ancient epics there are some instances of transmogrification in the battle of books again a part of the action takes place in heaven. In this respect, too, Swift is following an epic convention. Here we see that Jupiter is presented as holding a council in the Milky Way after fame has brought to him the information regarding the impending battle between the ancients and the moderns in St. James's library. In the convention of gods, a verbal battle ensues as to which of the two parties, the ancients and the moderns, should be victorious. So students, we see that battle of books is thus a mock epic. However, it does not mock calculated fun of the old epics or epic writers. Middle tell Murray, a verse that humor is not wholly excluded from fun. Swift may have handled epic traditions rather frivolously, but that does not imply a satire on Homer or Virgil. In his invocation to the muse, there may be found an element of parody directed against Homer, just as in some other points, but no disrespect to Homer is calculatingly intended. Fielding also parodied Homer and Virgil and yet gave them high praise. So students, this much for today. Thank you very much.